Welcome guys to another show on dynamic programming solutions and today uh, it's an easy problem uh, and the problems got to do with coin flipping probability and um, in the coin flipping probability problem the problem statement is as follows okay so we are given um, uh, a set of coins and given those coins there's a probability of the heads coming on any of the coin toss p1 p2 pn and the probability of exactly k heads in n coins being tossed is desired um, the probability of exactly having k heads and we need to determine an order n k algorithm now you can assume that all the rest of the stuff like multiplications etc can be done in uh, order one time and don't have to involve the number of bits in these um, these uh, numbers so with that let's look at the um, solution or the recursion that can solve uh, the problem using dynamic programming approach so here's the um, the recursion equation let's assume that we are looking at first i coins because we have to come up with a smaller problem let's iterate on i number of coins and j is the number of heads required the probability of you know getting j heads in i coins is what we call lij and if you are on the ith coin the way you look at the recursion is that either you're going to get head or you're going to get tails right so the total probability would be if you got a head then you have consumed one of the heads of the j required so now you have to look for i minus one you only have to look for j minus one heads if you did not consume that head if you got a tails then you still have j heads but i minus one coins and you're going to compute over that so this total probability is pi li minus one j minus one which is the case when you got a heads and one minus pi li minus one j where you got the tails and the other interesting thing is the initialization condition and you know lij equals zero um, for j less than zero and zero zero is one we'll look at it in a second it'll make sense why this condition okay so in this section we'll look at the matrix form and in this matrix form we have i on the uh, x-axis and j on the y-axis and this is showing you the initialization condition where if you have zero coins and and zero heads required then only we can say one but if you have zero coins and one heads required we call all these zero because they don't make any sense you cannot have zero coins and expect a head the probability is zero you cannot produce a head when you have zero coins so these are initialized as zeros and the only thing that's initialized as a one because if you initialize this as zero everything will become zero here right and anything where j less than zero is also assumed to be zero so the initialization condition is remember that zero zero is set as one everything else here is a zero and in a sense this is a don't care as well and so that's why we assume this to be a zero because this is don't care when you have zero coins what is the probability of having one head or two head or three heads it doesn't make any sense so these are initialized as zero and only thing that starts off this whole matrix is this this square which is zero zero and we set that to be one now um, going forward into the next column as you start filling this you just use this equation and let's just take the example of one comma zero right you have one coin and probability of zero heads now remember that you have to use both these um, the heads and the tails now if you have heads yeah, the previous one is pointing to a j equals minus one we know that that's going to be a zero because anything above this any negative values are always assumed to be zero okay so the probability of having a head here um, would then be looking up to um, you know uh, l zero comma minus one which is going to be zero and when you have a tails then it becomes one minus p1 times l zero zero which is this one and which is one so this one ends up being one minus p1 let's look at the next one which is l1 comma one so when you solve for this one it uses probability of you know this coin being heads which is p1 times now if you consume one head then the remaining heads is zero so you, then you have to use this one which is l00 so the previous probability was here times this one being heads if this one's a tails then you still have the one head remaining and you can look up here 
which is when you had zero coins and the probability of head, which is zero. So this is again taken out and this is a one. So this becomes P1, right? Which is obvious that when you have one coin, um, the probability of, uh, you know, uh, having a head is exactly this probability right here. Okay. So, and then when you get, when you have one coin, the probability of having two heads, three heads, it doesn't make any sense. So these are NAs or zeros, whatever you'd like to call it. These don't make any sense. And likewise, this one doesn't make any sense. So then you continue filling this for the rest of the columns. And remember that in every column, uh, if you get a head, you look up this uh, this um, diagonal, diagonally uh, left, um, you know, the square. If you get a tails, then you still have a head and you look left. And this this is the column that you use. So either you look diagonally left or you look straight left. And those are the two uh, that give you the equation here. So um, that's it, guys. That's how you fill up this matrix. And once you get it in the last column, given six, you know, in this case, I coins and whatever be the desired value. If, if K was three, then you look up this last one here and the answer is written right here. So that is, in a sense, the answer. And the other um, question here was, what is the order of the solution? And the order of the solution, obviously, is nk, because you have n coins here, and the y-axis is the k heads that you have to uh, achieve, maximum of k heads or k heads. And so this is from 0 to k. And uh, ideally, you know, this is uh, n plus 1 and k plus 1, but that doesn't really matter. The order still remains order of nk so that is a solution hopefully you guys liked it and uh, if you liked it and it made sense to you give me a thumbs up um, or you can subscribe to my channel and i'll bring you more uh, in the same series on dynamic programming i keep looking at dynamic programming because it's an interesting topic and uh, in future i want to compare uh, and bring more videos in the series that compare it to linear programming and um, um, you know greedy algorithms and such so um, stay tuned and uh, keep watching. Until next time, bye-bye.